Hi, I'm Dr. Arne Moisala, and today I'm interviewing my former university student, Mr. Elia Ilari Suhonen, who has been very active entrepreneur after his graduation. And Elia is going to talk about a very interesting Finnish company called CineShare. He has been working for the company and has some interesting information about it. CineShare is a startup company founded in 2022 and it offers a high-tech video publishing platform with high-quality 3D video templates to create business video presentations instantly and effectively. CineShare utilizes the state-of-the-art technology. It's called NVIDIA Omniverse for scalable three design simulation to mimic real life. There is actually also AI related reason why I work now with the, with with SignShare where I've been a pro like technical product manager slash uh, business developer now for the for the last 9 months and what what SignShare basically does is that they are leveraging Nvidia Omniverse technology by by developing extensions to it like the founder the founder Pekka Varis is actually the first Omniverse ambassador chosen by Nvidia. So he's a really top-notch 3D animator, and he has a vision of easening the use of Omniverse. So it's, it would be at some point effortless to create 3D storytelling and visualizes and experiences. For example, there's one customer case, like several customer cases that we have where we have to create a virtual avatar. So it would be easy for, for companies just to bring their model of avatars there, add the voice, add the animations. And of course, in a big picture, this would go towards building an infrastructure for a sort of Web3 metaverse, metaverse space. Regarding AI, there is so much talk about how it can optimize things and we, the first applications that we found that have really brought value are in industries like legal, finance, because we talk about linear, very simple, like easy to predict, easy uh, to understand causalities with this problem. So it's something for a narrow machine learning to be easily optimized, to be easily automated. But I've always had it at the back of my mind that there should be a connection to how AI could help with sustainability, risk management, and especially when we look at the, and I think my interest growing towards like sustainability and stuff is directly connected to what's happening in the world. My friend working as a, as a privacy technology lawyer, and he has to, he have to draft like compliance contracts for the companies for their data and personal data handling. He's actually using this uh, using OpenAI to help him draft the contracts and uh, this sort of system could be something I see decision makers would really really need that that they have to be able to broaden their context on the problem and they have to be able to ask not only specific like let's say quantitative like okay I, I have this business metrics or I, I have this data what's up but you also want to have have some qualitative context like okay could you analyze this like I for example tried to use it to ask about how you would deal with AI ethics in this use case uh, if you would if you would make some moral philosophical uh, considerations and it actually came up with them so my, my point is that with my master's thesis and where my interests are going is is like how such general purpose AI could be applied but at the same time Decision makers heuristically uh, uh, identify the context. So that OpenAI gives you some kind of idea. I, I can see that it knows more than I do. I think it knows more than anybody else does. But can it communicate with me? Uh, or what is the, the way that it communicates? How, how do you see this uh, as a development path? in the future, what, what would be like the next step of open open AI? What, what do you see? Yeah, well, I mean, that's actually, a, that's a really, really good thing to point out. I think that now how it works, it's based on, on like further questions that the person asks themselves. So, so I agree that there should be like some, like a more maybe 
proactive proactive stance by the AI that they, that they would be like, okay, actually, uh, I have now uncertainty on this area. Maybe we could be, uh, do you know about this, yeah. or could we develop our knowledge together? And and actually, that's that's still we have to like all the AI development by this time because we, we know that we have applications in like uh, diagnosing patients and and stuff and. I think the future and how it's worked so far is in collaboration with humans. So, I mean, it's still like we have to understand these are logical machines. They are mm -hmm. not meant to interpret. They are not built like humans are really good at divergent thinking. Like we can derive a connection between our childhood memory to what, what we do in business right now and then we come up with an innovation. There is no logical connection. So basically humans could help AI to think more broadly, to think more crea creatively. But can we come back to the Finnish AI ecosystem and uh, what do you think Finland is strong at the moment? Because the Finnish education system has been praised so many times that it uh, that it produces uh, uh, good skills and uh, and so on. But how, how do you see this uh, in in the future? What what is going to Finland be strong strong in 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 regard to to AI AI development? I think Finland has done a lot of good work already on governmental level for years, like having a strategy for the what we call. Uh, platform platform economies in a, in a way that there are a lot of initiatives between the universities and private organizations like sharing the kind of like the R&D infrastructure and having co-developing projects and there's a strong culture in Finland around that and yeah, now that, we're that, actually... and that was like launched like five years ago or something like that and other universities also the, mm. the, the studies are based on the same idea this joint platform yeah so so i mean i mean i i think this goes a bit political but i i want to mention that i think how fast governments and especially finland is 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 because because we, we are on the really top top with the with the with the technology and ai development and sustainability and it comes down to this open culture of sharing data and and as we know with ai it's based on like it's it's as good as the data is, whether it's about how much it is, mm -hmm. what's the quality, what's all that. Well, I think Finland will keep on building on this track and we can only get better AI by by different uh, organizations and data sources and everything coming together and uh, and also collaborating. So Finland has a really strong culture of, of building these sorts of, I would say, data R&D ecosystem so I think the rest of the world should definitely take an take an example what is your message to to university students to to continue after their studies and also to have the entrepreneurial mindset lifelong learning as some has been this sort of a cornerstone of where I built everything I don't think about what my degree covers but what I want to learn and go there and and try to really like this also comes to self reflection it's like try different ways of learning whether it's like uh, let's put it this way that many people who for example want to go to tech space they are struggling with the fact that oh i don't have an engineering technique uh, degree i don't have a technical background but i would say that all people can learn these advanced technical concepts when they find their their uh, medium of learning so i would encourage to combine like don't get discouraged of reading your first whatever tech related or some some research paper or such and then you're like oh i don't understand the equations i don't i don't understand uh, the terms just like just like embrace the uncertainty and just just like find new mediums of learning if it's not the if it's not the research paper that's gonna you know bring the heureka to you watch videos like sketch something on a paper and yeah. definitely get a mentor like whoever you see it doesn't have to it can be in your university or anyone like try to find somebody working in an area where you where you want to be and just communicate with them and, and i'm sure you can uh, students can find especially students should be able to find uh people who are willing to willing to help them because there is no business interests or such but there is just like a willing willingness to learn so when it comes to hong kong entrepreneurs so i think you have a great opportunity i'm really thrilled 
what you have been doing here. And what you could learn from the Finnish experience is that you have to find your own way to collaborate. So what I'm introducing to you is a kind of collective entrepreneurship because you are good at working together and you should not imitate any other models, no matter where they come from. And I think the government has a key role in this so that they could support individual companies in a particular way. So what I see that uh, Hong Kong has an advantage is that you have a long tradition and then your entrepreneurial ecosystem should support that long tradition. And from my point of view, being an entrepreneur since 85, so there are different ways of making successful companies. And one that I know the best is that have a strategy like quick and dirty so that you make your ideas and try out, make a proof of concept. And then if it's not a good idea, you just continue. But perhaps you have another strategy. Maybe you have only one business idea and you want to make it really well. So that is also one way to go about. And then there's a third one that if you are working for somebody else for a long time, so it can be so that gradually you come up with a new idea to run a business. And it can even be that you're at your senior age and you still can contribute to the society. So I think that is also a good source of innovation. Thank you so much. Enjoyed it? Please follow our Patreon channel to learn more about international business, or entrepreneurship knowledge, latest innovation, and scholars' insights, and even more. See you soon.